Hey guys, this is uh, Praveen DeBoss and welcome back to the MMA India show and with me is Carlos Kramer and Aditya P.S. Uh, Carlos is the ring announcer for Brave and they're doing an amazing, amazing job with it. So we, it's really great to have you on the uh, show. Thank you. Today. It's an honor to be here. And we've been uh, seeing you announcing all the fights, but great to be, you know, sitting across and uh, getting a chance to chat with you. Now, first of all, uh, you, you know, the, the business, so to speak, the, the, the job of a ring announcer is, is a really special one. This is special talent require. How did you get into, you know, uh, being uh, a ring announcer? I was a uh, communications major in college at UC Davis. I played American football over there. And I've always had a passion to interview people. And that's how it first started and in college age of 19 or 20 I had my first radio show and I started interviewing people and then from there I uh, you know mixed martial arts came around and I was like wow do I love this yeah. I want to be involved in any way I can so I started commentating and then there was a position um, my first big interview was with Roy Country Big Country Nelson many many years ago at a show in Ventura and then I had a break with Epic Fighting in San Diego, Jason Stewart, where their ring announcer wasn't able to uh, perform. He had some other duties. And I said, you know what? I can do this. Because I was uh, heavily involved in drama as well and theater. And I know what the art is of like a Broadway production. And that's what I always want to add to that. So that's kind of my journey. And then from there on out, um, I just mushroomed to other leagues, other events, uh, and now it's been pretty amazing. I'm, I'm considered the by many publications the number one host in the world. I was going to come to that as well. You know, yeah, so yeah. Far, you so know, it's been crazy. Yeah. It's been an amazing journey. Great. Now you are U.S. You know, part of the U.S. Marine Corps. Yes. So did being part of that somehow also uh, spark your interest for MMA? Was there any involvement there with being in the U.S. Marine Corps? Yeah, I'm a former boxer. My dad was a Golden Gloves uh, boxer from Chicago. And uh, I boxed, uh, boxed as well in the Marine Corps. And then when jiu-jitsu came along, I've been doing jiu-jitsu yeah. uh, for many, many years now under Carlos Valente, Dean Lister, Jeff Glover, Eduardo Tellis. Uh, those are my, my staple, and that's my lineage right there. So I just did anything involving the fight game. I'm uh, just been captivated and fascinated by. Great. Now, like you just mentioned, you were actually uh, awarded number one ring announcer by a fight with MMA two years in a row. Correct. Now, are there any instances where you're, you know, compared to like a, a Bruce Buffer or, or, or anything? You know, a lot of people try to. Yeah. Um, I respect him for all that he's done for our great sport. He's been a pioneer, he's been a trailblazer, and um, you know, it's, uh, I, again, I respect his work immensely. I've uh, grown up watching him as well. But I think that's pretty much where the comparisons stop, because we have two different, completely different styles. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, to me, I always look at it as how, how am I doing for the show and the promotion? I never think about accolades or awards or anything like that, or even comparing. Because, you know, if you look around the world, there's incredible announcers, you know, all over. In India, there's great announcers, you know, Russia, US, all of that. I'm just proud to be part of the family of mixed martial arts, promote our martial arts family and uh, the fighters. That's, that's my main passion always. Yeah. I know if I put them on an elevated platform, their career will go uh, better than ever. They need exposure because these guys are fighting so hard. And you know, they have a short window of when their career is going to end. Yeah. So they need to be involved with businesses and having uh, good relationships with their sponsors so they can carry on further after the, uh, the gloves come off. Now, the, the job of a ring announcer is not easy. You know, it's, a, it's a tough job. Can you, can you tell us a little about uh, uh, how you prepare, you know, for going into the ring? Of course, you require a lot of focus. And, and give us a little insight into how you prepare for it. You know, you've got to, I reach out to each and every fighter. I know every fighter in the Brave roster. Um, they're considered my family to me. 
and I want to know as much about them as possible. I also want to hang with them as much as possible in a, a social setting, you know, have a drink, uh, tea, coffee, whatever, so I can get to know them. Then I do research, I get all the pertinent information on them and their country, I want to know their gym, I want to know their coaches, and that way if you know all of that, you can really release the passion inside the cage, which again, you know, uh, I've been called literally like the most intense and the most passionate cage announcer in the world too. Yeah. And I take that as a huge compliment because I'm only doing it for the love of the sport. There's nothing about me that is uh, a, a, a show or fake, you can ask a DTF. Yeah. I've known for a very long time. <laughs> is a very incredible, respected man all over the world. But, you know, he's as real as it gets. You are as well, our team, I am, I am too. There's nothing, nothing more that I want than to just deliver the best show possible. Great. I, I can actually uh, comment on the things <coughs> Carlos is one of those people whose hard work and dedication and the passion towards work is something really commendable. Right? Giving you an example, he went through a heart surgery. Like he was possibly I would say like he was at deathbed. Right. And then the very next thing is that he woke up, got ready, they did a show very next week or so, I, I believe so. I went from, uh, I had the Widowmaker heart attack in, at home and I spent four, uh, four days in intensive care. Yeah. And we had a show in Abu Dhabi and my wife Tekka, when we got home out of intensive care, she said, uh, I go, baby, you gotta, you gotta pack me up. And she goes, you're not going <laughs> anywhere, right? I go, I'm going to Abu Dhabi. <laughs> and I, of course I didn't ask the doctors because I knew what they would say. And I went to Abu Dhabi, and uh, it was His Highness's birthday. It was a huge show, and that's the you know thank you for that because that's the kind of commitment uh, that I have to this sport. I've never missed a brave. I think I'm the only only one in brave that has never missed one show yet. And I live in the, you know in San Diego in the United States, so there's been hip replacements that I've had. I've had 22 surgeries, so. Uh, there's always been a reason to not make a show, but there's no way. I'm, I'm, I'm dedicated to Brave Combat Federation, to His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who is the greatest leader of any of the leaders that I've ever met in my life. Um, he's changed more lives than anyone I've ever met in my life. The Hawk, Muhammad Shaheed, incredible, the hardest working uh, president in the game today. And the entire Brave team, you know, we're just family. Yeah. And, and, and coming to coming to India again, to where I consider India like as well, you know, I consider the Kingdom of Bahrain a second home. I'm now considering India like a second wow. home because my welcome there, right? And yeah. after the fight and, and all that is so incredible with the fans and the people. I love you, India. Great. Now, can you tell us a little about the fight card today in terms of, do you have a favorite? Because like you said, you know, they're like family to you. Right. Is there a, a, a certain fight that you are looking forward to watching for tonight? Uh, uh, there's so many of them. Uh, you know, the first thing we have to talk about when you talk about today is that we are having a four-man open division, open weight tournament, and the winner gets not only $100,000. But the belt of gold. The belt, is talking about. <laughs> the belt of gold, the richest trophy in sport, Big, bigger than the World Cup, yeah. bigger than the NBA, the NFL. This is 6.2 kilograms of solid gold. It's 14 pounds roughly of gold wrapped around the winner's waist. And that's the kind of thing that Brave is doing. It, you know, and it, it, His Highness, it, it's incredible. And it, just to be a part of it is so really amazing and humbling at the same time. Yeah. So that's the first thing. After that, we now have Hamza Kuheji fighting in the main event. The pride of Bahrain, yeah. fighting in Bahrain, on the biggest stage in the world during Asia's biggest MMA event that we have in their history. Because combined with the IMF Championships, this week is packed with over 62 countries. 640 athletes in the IMF, um, and they're all, we're all coming together for one cause. 
So that main event fight is huge. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Also, um, Abdul Karim Al Sawadi, the pride of Palestine, in the co-main event. He's a killer, and he's going to put on a great show. Uh, Hussein Ayad, uh, Iron from KHK MMA, who has the number one amateur team right now in the world, which they've done it under His Highness in literally under four years. Yeah. You know, we're talking, we're talking, we're changing the landscape of it, mixed martial arts, changing the world, making the world a better place. I feel like a peace ambassador too, because we're going into countries that uh, many don't go into, and, and especially many Americans don't go into. Yeah. Everyone has always celebrated and treated me with so much kindness and love. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's what, what Brave Combat Federation does that no one else does, is we go into countries and we're not like other promotions, they promote it, they hit the event, and they're done. Yeah. We go in, we build a relationship, and we stay partners forever. You know, we want to help their economy, their businesses. Um, we want to show them the support and elevate their fighters like no one else has. And another thing, if I may add, yeah. that Brave does differently, and I, I know you, you see this, yeah. and Aditya and I have talked about this, Brave promotes their fighters like no one else in the world. Absolutely, it's, it's 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 really the perfect business model because these promotions where they're putting other people in the forefront, they're doing you know they're not they're not elevating their own team. Right. And when you fight in the Brave family, that's why their fighters are so loyal to us. We have the best marketing team in the game, and I and we'll go head to head with any promotion. Absolutely. You go, you go on a feed on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, it's brave content. And not only that, I mean, from the marketing perspective, if you look at behind the scene, how brave takes care of the fighter. Yeah. Uh, take an example of a fighter called John, who got previously injured, and uh, you know, the, the promotion is funding for these surgeries and everything, and is taking care of the fighter. So there are many instances where, you know, Everybody in, in this whole fraternity has become a whole family, not only fighters, officials, and everybody. So it's just like a whole big family within the world, uh, yeah. uniting everything together. So that's the beauty about this promotion. And I, and I, and I think it is, if, if I can add, really praiseworthy what uh, you know, His Highness Sheikh has done bringing the world championship as well to Marian and, and bringing the world's attention right, you know, right, to this part of the world with that and getting athletes <clears throat> from all over the world and, and really elevating the sport not just in uh, Bahrain but the world over because I, I feel a lot of people do pay attention to you know the promotions and they promote that but not everybody is promoting amateur right and they in the roots right and that is what's being done here exactly right now is they are giving a platform to the fighters for tomorrow a real platform Right, you know, and, and, and they're giving them the push, they're giving them the facilities, they're, you know, like I said, they're giving them the, the platform. And this is the only place you hear about really where it's, it's being done in a place where everybody is knowing about because it's being done along with a bigger promotion as well, along with Brave. Yes, you know, there, there have been world promotions before that, right, but nobody really knew about them because they were being done in conjunction with the main card. Right. Now because this is being done as a, as a fight week, you know, with a, with a main fight card also, because of that the World Championship, the amateurs, get a much bigger lift as well. So I have to say, you know, that's, that's, that's really amazing what His Highness is doing for the, for the sport, not just in the country, but in you know, the world over. And what's so different is, you know, the IMF you saw is being in Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In the U.S. And when I first did Brave One, I, uh, there's a video of me saying to the crowd, the kingdom of Bahrain is taking over the MMA world. Yeah. And people were messaging me going, what are you talking about? And I said, just wait, yeah. you watch. And sure enough, the IMFs have been here the last three years. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and so the world is now coming to Bahrain. And the kingdom of Bahrain is now the epicenter for combat sports worldwide. Absolutely. Absolutely. And look at the change here, right? A tiny country, 
and today in the world MMA ranking, yeah. Bahrain is number one. Oh wow, it's, so, it's unbelievable. Wow. So you can imagine people in the US, UK, and all these different countries yeah. where the MMA has been there since decades and decades, but then these four years, yeah. His Highness has invested in, you know, on the child, they've invested so much of time, energy, money, yeah. passion, and being there with the athletes, and now he's been uplifted the number one. Yeah. And they make it a great training center as well. Yeah. Yeah. Top of the line. Top of the line. Uh, you know, in bringing in coaches like Eldar Eldorov, yeah. um, you know, and uh, Yusuf Koheji, and fighters back in the day, like even Khabib. Uh, you know, was here for a very long time, and people don't know that His Highness uh, paid for his surgeries for Khabib. You know, paid for housing, uh, car, food when he he was just starting his career. Wow. And the reason I bring that up is because you'll never hear His Highness talk about that, Absolutely. but I can talk about it because he does, he's a man who selflessly gives, and there's literally hundreds to thousands of uh, and thousands of athletes that he's helped along the way that the world does not know about yeah so he gives and gives and he doesn't want it brought into the public forefront but sometimes as the voice of break yeah i have to share with the world how incredible this man really is i can't even begin to say no it is really amazing his passion for sport you know and it, it really shows it shows everywhere in, in manama you know, from the airport itself. So, you know, I have to hand it to him. He's been doing a really, really amazing job. And I think it's only going to get much, much bigger yes. from here because, because the roots have been put so strong. And you know what else has been really amazing on this event? There's influencers from yeah. all over the world yeah. coming here. Saudi Arabia, you know, Istanbul, uh, Russia, everywhere. And these people have millions of followers. Yeah. And it's brilliant because they're coming here and they're talking about Brave, His Highness, IMF, um, and it's just a fantastic union. They're treated like royalty, you know, our whole yeah. family really is treated amazing. And uh, it's just what makes Brave just different. I guess it's about the leadership, right? I mean, right. The first time when I saw His Highness was in uh, Vegas in World Championship, I'm in the World Championship. The, I, I still can't forget the image, but he was carrying the bucket what, as a condiment for all the amateur athletes. And it was number one for every Bahraini athlete, he was just carrying the bucket, ice packs, and he was just taking care oh, of them. That was the first time that I saw. And usually you see the leaders, oh, they do it, and sometimes they say that, oh, maybe because of the press. But consistently for three years in Bahrain, for each and every single athlete, you know, just walk in, be there with them, corner them take care of them, you know, give them advice and be there, take care of the injury and just be there on the ground. So that shows that when a leader of such a high stature, yeah. he is inspiring people automatically, all these athletes, they just get so pumped up. They want to do best for the country because if somebody like him is supporting, why wouldn't you be the number one team in the world? Yeah, but it's incredible. You know, hug them in defeat, celebrate with them in victory. Yeah. Um, and yeah, even yesterday, you know, when I was there, uh, someone was saying, Where, where's his highness? And I go, there's his highness right there. Yeah. And he's just right in there with the team. He's got his hat backwards, right? You wouldn't, if you didn't know him, you know, you wouldn't know him. Absolutely. And uh, he's just, uh, that's the kind of thing. So when your leader is like that, everybody is absolutely, is absolutely like that. Yeah. Now, uh, coming to uh, India, you're coming to India next week. Oh, yeah. There's a card in Hyderabad, November 23rd, right? Yeah, November correct. 23rd. Now, do you want to tell us a little about, you've been to India before, of course, like yes. you spoke. Yes. How do you think that the vibe is for MMA in India, as, as, as because you've been all over the globe, as, as different from other countries? I tell you what, I think the vibe, vibe in India is the best vibe that I've ever seen. Uh, as far as the fans, the feeling, the electricity in the air. It took me last brave. Uh, it took two security guys a half hour to take me from the cage to, and that wasn't enough time. They were, I wanted, you know, I wanted to give every picture, every autograph I could, but they pulled me to my interview with MTV India, which is amazing by the way, uh, Akbar Rashid and, and, and that whole entire group. But, um, that is an amazing uh, vibe and spirit, India. The fans 
are so hungry to be a part of the fastest growing sport in the, wor in the world and I can feel it and you can taste it, how, how happy they are at this stadium. Yeah. And it really, <clears throat> it really touches my heart to be able to go to India and to be able to promote India for the great nation that it is and the great athletes that are starting to uh, you know, come aboard. You got have guys like uh, Abdul Munir, uh, yeah. Kantaraj Agassi, who is an absolute killer. Yeah. And by the way, Agassi was undefeated till his last fight. Yeah. And many say, including me, that I think he got caught with that one in a million, yeah. he, 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 yeah. one in a million, right yeah. hit that would have taken anybody out of the game. Yeah. So he very well could be, could be undefeated yeah. right now. So I'm looking forward to him as you know, as as the ground master and uh, such an elevated game and that he is. Oh my gosh, he, yeah. Muhammad Farhad is uh, really developed into the face of Indian MMA now, so hasn't he? Absolutely, yeah. he's just being the knockout artist, right? The way he is, he's been knocking out people like crazy. I mean, his record speaks for himself. Yes. You know, so it's, it's, it's crazy, his journey back from some other promotion to all the way to Brave and the way he has decimated all of his opponents. Yes. So that's, that's crazy. It's, it's exciting to see him uh, and such a great man as well. Such a great reflection right. of uh, the Indian people for the world, right? Yes. To yes. see, he's, yes. he's truly a, a great champion and role model for so many and that's what that's you know only going to elevate uh, MMA in India to further heights as he keeps going. Sure. And yes, what a uh, what an incredible knockout artist he yeah. is. And we I've witnessed it several times. Yep. And every time, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I'm just inspired and in awe by his power, mm -hmm. his speed, and his uh, his electricity in there. It's really yeah. something to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, Carlos, I know, know you need to go uh, because uh, 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 you told us the time and it is time. You need to go and get ready for the main event today. But it's been such a pleasure to talk to you and to uh, get your knowledge of MMA and because you're at the epicenter of, of, of Brave and uh, your views on it. It's been so amazing and I really look forward to talking to you again Yes, uh, very soon. Whenever you need me, I am here for you. Um, you know, my goal, like we said, is to elevate our great sport all over the world. And it's an honor for me to be here with you and okay. share, and it's an honor for me to be coming to India. So fans, November 23rd, Hyderabad, we're going to rock that place and the roof is going to be shaking. Is it Gachi Boli Stadium? Gachi Boli Stadium. There we go. It's, awesome. I can't wait. I'm getting goosebumps already. Awesome. Great. Well, it was such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Thank you very you so much. much. Thank you And very I don't know who was knocking on your door, <laughs> but let's see if he's still there or not. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Thank you so much. A pleasure. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Thank so you we're going to uh, uh, stick around and talk to Aditya still, but we're going to uh, cut out right now and start afresh with uh, Aditya PS. Great. Perfect, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Can we do a quick uh, picture?